Right, Franta, I just wanted to do a quick director's Q&A because we've just seen your film, Grayson, and I wanted to ask you some questions about it. Okay. So, can you talk me through the idea that you had? Where did it come from and how did you approach it? Okay, so, um, in the past I've done these sort of things before, like movies and stuff. I never really got to finish them because I was like... As I was filming them, it was like I got too excited and I was showing people, so it was like there was no point finishing it and stuff. And it was more based on horror, like that was my whole thing. I kept doing horror movies and stuff like that, and I was too scared to like do something else because I didn't know if I would be good at it. So um, that was kind of the whole thing. I wanted to change it up a bit, and I didn't want to do like a serious kind of like. Um, and like love stories and stuff like that so I thought the m most exciting thing would be like action so I started looking at some like um, action movies with, like killers and all that so I started looking at movies like Anna it's a really good one and like Mr. Right and um, that's kind of all the idea. Okay amazing so you did some research um, and then did you write the script yourself? Yeah. Okay and how was that process for you? It was kind of hard because I'd never written a script before. Like the stuff I've done before, it was kind of just off mind and kind of just going out as I go along and improvising. So when like I found out I need to do a script, I was a bit worried because I haven't done one before. Um, so I was sort of in my bedroom just kind of throwing around ideas on my laptop and stuff. And then what bit by bit, I kind of started thinking the words and how I wanted to be. So I wanted like an introduction and then like introduce um, the audience to his like job, what he does, who he is as a person, and then I wanted something like um, why he does this, you know, his past, and then the end, and I kind of wanted the end to be more, like I wanted it to end on a cliffhanger, so that it kind of shows that there's more to that story, because I didn't want to make it too long, so. Which is actually quite a common convention of that genre. Yeah. So it's something that we're used to seeing when we watch action movies quite often. They do set it up for a potential sequel. Yeah. So what struck me about your film was the, um, the actual skill in which you um, communicated that genre. So um, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about the actual visual style of it because it is very stylized. Yeah. Um, and can you just talk me through a little bit about your choices in terms of the shots, um, the style, the music and everything, that sort of production yeah. side of things. Uh, so I wanted the first couple of shots to be quite simple, you know, because it's just starting off, it's just an introduction to the character. So that was just um, him walking and stuff like that, going to his like appearance favorite spot. Um, I wanted to make it like um, a bit more cinematic, so like with the tree scene and stuff like that, going behind the tree, just showing him walking and all that, with the voiceover introducing him. Um, then with uh, the scene where he's at the lake, I wanted to show like a lot of it, if that makes sense, just to show like this is where he goes all the time, this is why he does it. And I wanted to focus it more on him. And I did like, um, the start of it was more him not showing his face, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, like him talking and stuff, but it only reveals his face when he finishes his introduction, that's when it's like the final reveal. Um, the action scenes, I wanted to make that like as cinematic as possible, so I, all I was thinking is just fast movement, just a lot of fast camera movements. Um, so like the scene in the, the flat with one of my actors that I had uh, my cameraman, all I just told him was do a lot of fast shots, just focus on the key points, like the knife part, zoom it in, zoom it back out. Um, you had to whip pan. Yeah, it was just a lot. One shot that stands out to me, which I thought was absolutely brilliant, and it was almost like a bridge scene, but you were up. It looked like you were somewhere in a, a, a corridor yeah. and the camera completely flipped around to kind of emulate your state of mind. Mm -hmm. Talk me through the decision to do something like that. So it's like for the, um, when I was robbing the bank, um, <laughs> that was kind of just a quick flashback and I wanted that to be like really loud and like show the status of that scene. That's why I thought that part where it just turns around. I used um, the gimbal and it has a little setting where it can do like, I think it's called Inception, 
where it literally just does Flips. a 360 and I thought that was just perfect because it was like a lot of screaming, a lot of crowd things and with the visuals as well, it was just perfect to it, so. I think it did work. Um, so what about then when it comes to, so um, talk about who you've worked with, how did you approach working with your actors and your role, because you wrote the script, you acted in it as well, so how did you communicate your vision to your camera person and your actors? Uh, so, as I was writing the script, I was already imagining locations as I was doing it because I didn't want to write the script and not knowing where it would be. Mm -hmm. So, I was already, as I was doing the script, I knew where it was, who I'm doing it with. Um, I was trying to figure out which actor would be best and what's their best qualities to each scene. So, one of my actors already was in my previous films and she's really, really good, so that's why I kind of saved it for last. <laughs> for the last part because it's the most like serious and stuff like that. Um, my cameraman, he wanted, he's from the National Youth Film Academy and he was looking for camera experience as well because he wants to be a cameraman. So I thought he would be perfect to think I could guide him through stuff like that because I've done shots like these before, like I've done camera work in the past so I thought I could help him out and he was really good. <laughs> like I showed him exactly really what to do and how it would like yeah affect the scene and yeah. how it would show what's happening and stuff like that. Um, did you do a storyboard? Yeah, I'd done a storyboard. So Did it help you in working those shots out beforehand or yeah, what was that process like for you? Definitely. So um, I used this app called um, Convert Pro, which I basically, I didn't want to draw it out because I wanted as clear vision as possible. So what I did was, um, in each location, I took a picture of who's going to be in it and what's going to be happening in each shot. Like, I only took the pictures that was like the hardest past the film. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see how that would look like, see if it would work, because I didn't want to film such a hard thing and it turned out being really bad. So I took some photos with my actors and um, put them in position of what I wanted to happen and I converted it in the app and it basically just does, makes it easier for you to draw it. So I have an Apple Pencil on my iPad so I drew it out as like closest to detail as possible and it turned out really good. I loved it straight away and I just knew like when it's, it's going to work. Yeah, it's going to work. <laughs> Did you have that excitement? Yeah, it was just <laughs> very So exciting. you edited it the whole thing as well. So talk me through your editing process and also thinking about um, the rhythm, the pacing, those action sequences and then how you used your your music and your sound design. So I used an app called Kind Master which I um, edited it all on my iPad as well. It's There's a free version but you can pay, I think it's three pounds a month for the full version, which gives you so much more. Like you can um, do chroma key green screen mm -hmm. um, effects as well. There's a lot more like speed effects, a lot more like you can do colorization, um, color customization on there to make the like shots appear more. You used that, didn't you, in the yeah. opening sequences? So it made yeah. the colors a lot more vibrant, which mm -hmm. I think made the scenes more like HD almost mm -hmm. as well. So it made it look all really script, uh, crisp. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was editing it, it started off kind of like hard because I haven't edited like in a long time. But as I got back into it, it was really good. And the action um, like montage was the most exciting because that was just a lot of fast movements, a lot of like cinematic shots and stuff like that. I think. There was some like mistakes as well when filming. So like um, the scene where I knocked out one of the actors with my elbow, um, she was still in frame mm. when I um, hit her. So that was a bit annoying and I wanted her out of frame. So what I did, I kind of um, cropped one of the scenes just in time and I zoomed it in really fast. So it kind of gives an imagination that like she goes off screen. Mm. So like little mistakes like that, I fixed them mm -hmm. quite easily. But well done. And what about the sound design? Because, you know, for me, this film, like, your film felt like going to a cinema. It felt like a roller coaster. So you did use copyrighted music um, in this, um, which is understandable, obviously. Um, but just talk me through the choices that you made. Okay, so um, for the first thing I wanted to sort of 
a song that's just quiet but not quiet at the same time, kind of just an introduction music, started off slow, got a bit faster, and then I um, wanted to fade it out for a bit till he gets a text message, I wanted that to be silent, because a bit of like the silence is just a text message saying time to get back to work. The song that started off with it was from, oh, I forgot what it's called. It's a Queen song. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. the word. And, um, I thought that was perfect yeah. with the beats and stuff like that that um, started off I really like well. the match when he walks down the stairs yeah. because he walks down in exactly the right beat to that yeah, song I yeah. found that perfect to it and even some of the gunshots as well went to mm -hmm. some of the loud beats in the song so I thought it was really really good and it went really well um, with that song I obviously added a lot of sound effects as well that, that were non-copyrighted so um, where did you get those from? YouTube and um, I converted it into an MP3 using just a converter on a website. I downloaded them, added it in, put it in the right spot, the right moment. Some of them were like really quiet, so I had to turn it up a bit louder and stuff like that. Um, obviously, some of them, when they finished, it gave kind of a weird like outro to it, so I had to fade it out mm -hmm. almost. Um, so when the two killing scenes um, finished and there was the third one in the end house with my two actors the song that I started off with didn't go as well because what I wanted was the car scene kind of just showing that he's on his way to do his last kill of that day mm. um, and that song just didn't go to it so I found another one that was a bit more kind of almost gangster like to it because the house we kind of made it really messy and kind of like a trap house almost yes yeah it it did have a sort of, um, yeah, it felt like something that we'd seen in, I don't know, like a Guy Ritchie movie, yeah. like Rockstock or something. Something quite sinister. And yeah. actually, there was an effect that you used in that scene to, to create that meaning in the mind of the audience. So what did you do in the house? Are you on about like the lighting yeah. as well? Yeah. So I used um, a color customizer, mm -hmm. which makes the lights a lot more vibrant and I done that like a layer over layer. Right. So if I done it I done it the first time and the lighting was a lot more like vivid mm -hmm. but it wasn't as vivid as I wanted to be yeah. because there was some light there was like a lot of lighting from like the lights, blue lights and then there was obviously the ceiling lights and stuff like that and I thought they would work well together if they were just a bit more vibrant. Yeah. So it was all in post-production, you didn't actually use any coloured lighting no. gels or anything like that. No. So that's really interesting that, really that you used post-production, yeah. wow. Because it did feel like you'd taken some gels on set and you'd really thought about, you know, if we create and we mix pinks and blues, what does that signify to the viewer? And it did feel like you guys were walking into some kind of gangsters, yeah. you know, lair and something really sinister was going to be going on in that location you know <laughs> I didn't want it to be all like um, kind of neat and like mm -hmm. just you can tell that that was in someone's house yes so we made it really like sort of messy and we added some like blinds as well to um, the thing and it's almost like the villains are kind of hiding out there that that's not where they live or anything yeah, yeah, yeah. especially with like handing over the suitcase yeah. they're just hiding out there so the light in there turned out really good that's why I used a second song as well because mm. I thought it went really well sort of with that scene because it looked messy and stuff like that great um so just talk about now what happens with a film so you've got some copyrighted music do you know what have you done any research into copyrighted music or film festivals what they want i mean um, where would you show this film now so i've done some research onto youtube copyrights mm -hmm. and um i've also like emailed them to ask them to review my video if it would be allowed to post it because i didn't want to post it and then just then take it down amazing and did you so, hear back they did get back to me and they reviewed my video and they said that as long as the music is not over a minute and a half, so like um, the big music like um, from Queens and yeah. Billie Eilish and stuff, as long as it's not a minute over a half, they're okay with me posting the video. Amazing. So I got a license for it. So. That's amazing. Amazing. And I'm really pleased that you took that step, that extra step to contact YouTube. That's brilliant. What about um, a film festival? Do you think you'd like to try and send this in somewhere? I would like to send it somewhere, but obviously I still need to do a bit more research mm. to that. I feel like some f film festivals might be okay with it, but then there's some, some that not. Might, yeah, yeah. Um, I think forward. possibly a youth film festival might be more lenient. I know that the, the bigger ones would be very strict on using yeah. copyrighted music and stuff. 
but um, it would be a good idea to have a little bit of research. So Cinemagic, mm -hmm. a youth film festival, um, I would recommend having a look and see. And then you've got Into Film, which do a monthly screening and stuff like that as well. So they're all like for under, you know, the age of 25 mm -hmm. students and stuff like that. So um, I just want to say very well done on this Thank film. You. Are you pleased with the outcome? How do you feel the f whole finished product is? Because I know you've got some feedback as well from online. So if you just want to give you sort of some summary of how you feel about the film itself. I couldn't be more happy with it. Like it turned out really good. It turned out exactly how I wanted to do. Um, I think if I had a bit more time with the last scene that I wanted to film that really at the end because I wanted some more time to focus on my website and more of like any extra information for the last scene. But um, the only thing I would add to my film is probably because I speak so much about my parents and their death and stuff, but the audience doesn't see mm -hmm. like a picture or how they even look like or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Which I found it, it turned out okay, yeah. but I think still like maybe that extra step of maybe like a flashback of a kid running or something like that. I don't know because then you're very much in danger of becoming a little bit too cliched. Yeah. And for me personally, I don't think it needed that because it was about you and you now. It wasn't as in you, the Grayson character. Um, and yes, sometimes you can put those in, um, but they do, you know, they are a bit cliche. So not necessary, I don't think, okay. even though I know you can be a bit sort of like critical and self-critical and you think, what more could I have done? But I'm really glad you're pleased with this. Yeah, um, yeah. I do think it was quite accomplished. And certainly within the conventions of that genre, it felt cinematic. It felt like a roller coaster. And what I enjoyed most was the entertainment value that quite often um, we make films and students make films and we try to be artistic and all the rest of it. And they have their own place. And don't get me wrong, I do love that type of film and it has value as well. But this just pure entertainment has its role too. And I really enjoyed watching it. And I think the rest of the class and all of that positive feedback that you've had as well from sharing it yeah. and it being shared again is testament that it's enjoyable it, you know this is what we go to the cinema to see don't we so yeah. well done thank you